I found our first reading today from Wisdom quite captivating. It almost sounds like it's from the New Testament in a sense. It sounds a little bit like, kind of like Paul. In terms of, even though it's the Old Testament, it, there's a real grasp here of the gospel and, and the sense of, of, of our eternal destiny and what we're living for. It's almost like a kind of a proto-gospel and it's, it's beautiful. It, it talks first about, you know, uh, we were made, well, I'll use my own translation. <laughs> I prayed with this one this morning. Um, we are made in the image of God and in his nature. All right? So it brings us back to the garden. Uh, we were made in the image and likeness of God. And, and I, I love, I love the, dis, this thing, the distinction there. We are made in the image of God. So we, we share in, 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 in God's nature in the, in the sense that you know, we, are, we are sons and daughters. And he created us and we have souls and we are made for him. We're also making in his likeness, but his like, our, our, our likeness to God can be distorted through sin. So our, our image will always be the same, but our likeness uh, is, it depends on our own free will of, of, of how close we want to get to God or how far. I remember a teacher was, was sharing with us, you know, in the sacraments, grace is always the same. Ex opere operato. It's, it's this Latin phrase. But our disposition towards that grace changes. Kind of, it's this, another phrase, ex opere operantis. And it's almost like a, like a bonfire, right? So the fire's always hot. It's always there. But sometimes we, we go closer or further away from that bonfire. And that's how much grace we want to receive, depending on our state of life. So we're, we're always in the image of God, but our, our, but our, our likeness is, is, is depending on our choice uh, to draw close to him. And so he says, it says in the wisdom, it, it states that. And then it says, by the envy of the devil, death entered the world. And it's, it's speaking of, 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 of this, uh, again, the Genesis story, sin entering the world and then and, and distorting us. Um, but yet he's talking about the souls of the just. When, because we, ha- we are created in God's image, our, our life is not just simply, you know, I talk about this in funerals, you know, being born and, and, and living and dying. But it's, 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 it's so much more than just this world. We live in this eternal perspective. And, and, and everything is colored by our relationship with, with God. And, and our life here is just a blip in history compared to eternity. I remember uh, my, found, my founder, Father Bob, he would give this kind of analogy of eternity. He would say, imagine there's this big metal ball in, 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 in just this huge metal ball and it's kind of out there in space and every thousand years a bird just flies by and just kind of touches it with his wing and then you know a thousand years later i'll just kind of touch it with his wing when the time that that huge metal ball is dissolved to nothing eternity has started and it's like it kind of i wrap my mind around it and i, I can't really it's like well wow, that's that's crazy i remember being a kid and and thinking about eternity and then just like having to stop like i can't i can't do this this too much but that, 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 that that's kind of the, what we're living for you know we're living for eternity with God or to eternity is a separation from God um, but it's, it's this time now that matters how are we living our relationship with the Lord how are we living in his likeness and, and, and the beautiful thing is a life for God is actually a difficult life because it involves a humbling of ourselves and remembering of who we are and who God is. And then there's this whole concept of redemptive suffering, right? Uniting our suffering here on earth with, with Christ on the cross. And, and, and it says that here, For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in a furnace, he proved them. And as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. So it's, it's this time of, of, in a sense, chastisement, this time of being purified by the Lord. And, and it's, it's our choice to cooperate ourselves with that. You know, we, might, we all endure suffering. We all endure uh, difficulty. But we have a choice to say, Lord, I want to take this and turn this into something beautiful. Or actually use this for my own depression, my own, my own, my own sadness. But the Lord gives us opportunity to 
to be chastised and to be purified as gold. There's a beautiful image. I, I love this image. I don't know if it's real or not, but I've heard this many times. Uh, when, when, when a goldsmith is making gold, he, knew, he knows that it's ready when he can see his reflection in, 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 in the gold that he's purifying. And that's, that's a beautiful image of, of, for us, right? As we're being purified, we'll see more and more of the Father's reflection in us. And, and we'll see more of, of who we were created to be. But we have to let ourselves go through that process so that indeed we will enjoy eternity with the Father and, and enjoy uh, that, that beatific vision, that eternal bliss. Um, so like, let's, re let's remember that today, that we, we're living for eternity and that today is an opportunity to take a step forward towards that heavenly kingdom.